welcome to Chit Chat. I'm your host Chetna, and with me today on the show is Reva Apte. Hi, Reva. Hi. Reva is a rising junior at University of Connecticut, and let's hear from her a little bit about the school. Okay, so you're from Connecticut. Yeah. It's home for you. <laughs> it kind of, yeah. Wow. So this is a state school. It's a state and, school. And yes. uh, do you find a lot of international students there? Um, for the most part, they're from the tri-state area of Massachusetts. But um, there are a lot of kids from China, and there are a couple from India. But I think what the school is trying to do is try to expand the international base. So they're trying to give more scholarships to international oh, students or wow. even out-of-state students okay. to reduce the number of in-state students in the school. But that being said, of course, they have to get some in-state students because yes. it is in-state yes. students. <laughs> okay, so uh, Reva says University of Connecticut is trying to get international students on scholarships. Right. I think that sounds interesting. I also read somewhere about a huge multi-million dollar investment that they're making. Right, they're actually putting in a billion dollars mainly for STEM research as well as um, promoting the school and making it more a 21st century kind of school. So the project's kind of next generation Connecticut, so it's kind of like um, they're trying to transform it in a way where it's more appealing to more students to come into a school and have a wider research base. But it's also for STEM research, so it's science, engineering, technology, and mathematics. mathematics. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And I did read that it is supposed to be one of the great research schools in the right. US. Yeah, it really promotes research uh, to students, so it's always open to any student who wants to do research. And that being said, even though it's for STEM research, they do try to expand it to other students as well. So you do see some art student getting into research, which is really nice. Okay, so that's great. A lot of investment into research. Yeah. And, and what is the major that you're pursuing? I'm a business major, so I'm majoring okay. in finance. Okay, okay. And do you end up doing courses from various schools or is it like... What? The first two years they try to give you a broader education so they kind of make you do a couple of general education requirements in different fields. So I had to take a science course, I had to take a math and English course. Uh, and now towards like the last two years of my school right now I have to do more of the business courses. But even when my major is a finance major I still have to do a couple of marketing courses, a couple of business law courses to have that holistic education experience. <laughs> over 600 uh, groups and activities that you can join to and you become involved in campus in some way or other. Like it's hard to not be involved in campus sure. if you actually think about it. Um, they have sports groups just for, not, you don't have to be part of a big team just to play for your own fun. They have arts and crafts, they have drama. Um, Greek life is actually a really big thing. It's actually really nice. The whole um, idea that we have about sororities and fraternities is very different till you actually get into the school and experience it yourself. There's a lot of unity among them. There's a lot of activities that they do even within themselves, which is always really nice. There's a lot of philanthropy that goes on. So it's always nice to be part of something like that. So tell us a little bit about the, the philanthropy part of the Greek life. So every sorority or fraternity has a certain philanthropy they follow. And they have a certain charity that they donate to every time they raise funds for something. So um, I'm actually part of a sorority there. And our philanthropy is domestic violence. So we try and do events throughout the year and raise money for that. Um, 
the University of Connecticut has its own dairy bar and they have the best ice cream in the state. Oh. So people from all over actually want to come and taste that because I guess they, um, it's kind of like homemade ice cream. So they have their own cows around so they kind of take that milk and then churn it and make their own ice cream. Wow. So it's, it's a treat for everyone. <laughs> um, for the sports fans, uh, basketball is a very big thing in our school. Um, we won over 13 national championships oh and God. last year actually we witnessed that the women and the men's basketball team won the, the national championships which happened after I want to say like 10 or 12 years where both of them won. So that was actually a time I actually got to see a lot of school spirit at our school because yeah. everyone came together to celebrate, everyone was going like crazy around campus and just enjoying that moment. We actually got a day off of school which is nice. <laughs> so that's an added bonus I guess. Um, we have this thing every year during the spring called oozeball. So it's kind of like volleyball in the mud. So oh. it's 8 inches of mud and you play volleyball in it with teams of I want to say 5. And I did that last year. It was probably the best experience I've had. You're so dirty the entire time. You're like sticking in the mud. Your shoes come off. It is, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we also have this thing called Husky Pond, which is um, the largest um, statewide philanthropy event that the school does as a whole. So what it is, it's about an 18 hour dance marathon. And the funds that you raise from that go to the Connecticut Children's Hospital. Yeah. So um, every year they kind of make it bigger and better. So last year I participated in it. Um, it was a lot of fun. It is tiring. It's 18 hours of <laughs> just dancing on your feet. You can't sit down. And oh. during that time they ask you, like, they have a new goal every hour. And of course before and after. And um, every hour you try to raise a certain amount of money. So by the end of it we raised over 560 Wow. Which was <laughs> which is pretty amazing because I guess we beat the record from the past couple of years. So it was a very fulfilling experience. Fantastic. Uh, the University of Connecticut actually is very um, open to students' dietary restrictions. So it was actually named uh, the number one gluten-free dining um, option. Because usually what happens is the students have a lot, either they have peanut allergies like gluten-free, they have a lot of problems in terms of food. And of course when you go to school you're going to eat at a dining hall. But um, they kind of work around you and make sure that you have the food that you know your needs yes. require. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the secret of your good health. <laughs> So thank you so much for thank being you. on the show and thank sharing so with us insights about your beautiful school and uh, it was a pleasure having thank you. Thank you. Click the subscribe button below, like me at facebook.com slash chatchat101, follow my twitter handle chatchat101 or at instagram chatchat101. Please leave your comments in the sections below and if you'd like me to feature any particular college, please let me know.